Another edition of the Bear Pets Podcast is upon us, NFL version. I'm your host, Mayor Chris Felica, joined by Jeff Schwartz here in the studio. Sammy P. Will Hill will join us in the gambling group chat momentarily. On a week in, week out basis, nothing provides the predictable, unpredictability <laughs> of the NFL because, of course, we all knew the Vikings would and the 49ers a second consecutive regular season loss. And of course, Bill Belichick, who should be oh, fired geez. as Patriots head coach, and Mac Brown should be benched. Of course, they'll beat the Bills when Mac Brown, Mac Brown, Mac Jones leads the Patriots McCorkle. The field. Just the NFL is a week to week league. You nothing that happens the previous week to prepare you for the next week. You have to take each week on its own. Yeah, you can talk about how the team is playing good or bad. I mean, for example, Buffalo's defense is a lot worse w- w- without Matt Milano. You certainly take that into, consider- into consideration mm-hmm. for the week. But, like, a result from last week, has not, to me, has nothing to do with the result the following week. Right. And, and you just have to take the matchups as they are, the, the, the game winners as they are. And, again, the, the gross sides are starting to come back now, right? The gross sides are starting to win again. The, the, the teams that we That's are hyping we like. up tend to lose the next week because that's the way the NFL works. You start reading your press, but more than anything else, like I know that's the simplest thing to say, but everyone's a professional, right? Everyone is trying to win each week. They're all, they all have extreme talent. They're all gifted. And some weeks like the Patriots just come on and just, you, you win that game. The lions who we praised last week end up falling flat on their face. The Niners, all of a sudden who looked like two weeks ago, they were the best team in all the NFL now, now can't buy a win. Now they play a tough Bengals team this weekend. Um, and of course, the cream of the Chiefs and the Eagles just kind of rises to the top, right? Some ugly football at times, but they're sitting atop, um, you know, atop their their conferences. And I think the favorites to meet again right now in a, in a rematch. Uh, so each week, Bear, you take it for what it is. You don't look back. You don't look forward. There, there's no look ahead weeks in the NFL. Every week is the same. And I believe there's even, there's no bye weeks this week. So everyone's playing. Good. It's a good week of NFL action. And um, are, you, are you ready to start with your bets here? More likely, if you had to take one of the two, more likely to get back to the Super Bowl, Kansas City or Philadelphia. Oh, the Chiefs. The Chiefs, this is the best team they've had under Patrick Mahomes because they're they're good on special teams, they're good on defense, and they're good on offense. Like, they're the the... The trio of those with and their offense still is trying to figure things out. Last week was very good. Obviously, the Chargers can't can't cover Travis Kelsey in any single game. <laughs> but McCole Hardman had a catch, a big yep. third down catch. MVS made an appearance who hasn't shown up yet. Yes, he did. Rasheed Rice continues to grow in this offense each week. The offense line we know is good. They, they no more penalties for for Taylor misaligning, yep. so like they, they figure that out. But Chaco runs hard. The play calling looks to be sort of back in rhythm again. Um, and again, I'm rooting for him defensively. When you have five rookies play last season, those five rookies are better. This is Trey McDuffie looks like a stud, as we kind of expected. Uh, and so to me, it's the Chiefs, right? You think Bolton's going to be able to go this week with the wrist or Probably no? Probably not. Well, so the, so he he dislocated his wrist. The thing about that injury, I think, is he could just cast his hand up. Like he just put it in a cast. It's hard, though. Isn't um, it? Well, he's I a know. linebacker. He's not, he's not in charge of, of, you just, you wrap up and you, it's, I will give the Chiefs this though. This is this is why Brett Veach is great as a general manager. They had Drew, Drew Tranquil this offseason. Like they like they they have Leo, like they have players not as good as Bolton. Right. They don't run capable though. But capable players, like good enough to get by when you're missing linebackers. He might miss this week. That Watson might come back on uh, just his elbow. But like the Chiefs are just playing good football. They're at Denver now. Um, who knows if they're gonna cover that game or not? But like to me, it's the Chiefs, right? The Eagles, there's some warts there, but play well against the Dolphins. The Niners, they're not the same if everyone's not healthy, right. obviously. Defensively, they're not they're they're not the same without D'Amico Ryan's calling the plays. They're, they're good, but not, I don't think, quite as good as they were last season. Uh, and the Cowboys in that side are completely untrustworthy. So the, there's just no one in the NFC I think I really trust. The Lions aren't going to do it, in my opinion. Um, that has nothing to do with last weekend. I just don't think the Lions are good enough to, to win the NFC. Um, but let's start with your, your bets. We'll talk about... Bears bets now. We'll get our best bets later. We'll do Survivor later as well. Speaking about the Eagles, the Eagles are at the Commanders. The Commanders are getting six and a half points. The total is 43 and a half. The Eagles are six and one. Best record in the MC right now. They're four, two, and one against the spread. They failed to cover against the Commanders earlier this season in an overtime win. The Commanders are three and four straight up and against the spread. Washington just lost to the Giants 14 to seven on Sunday. Where are you going here, Bear? 
You know where I'm going here. Commanders. Yes. Of course. Of course. It's a great way to. Hurts isn't on the injury report, but it, it, like we talked about it right at the top of the show. One week to the next. Yeah, in, don't, in this league, yeah. you have a huge emotional win. You blow out the Dolphins at home on Sunday night. Commanders couldn't have looked any worse than losing 14-7 to the, to, to the Giants. Remember, it's the Philly team that nearly lost at home to, to, to Washington a couple of weeks. I mean, probably should have lost uh, at home if, if Rivera decides to go for two at the end of regulation and not go to go to overtime because his team allegedly was tired. So I think the Eagles are going to be a huge public side. I think the well, how war- do you say that? This like, the team was tired. Like that's a, just... so you know if you're tired, then you know what? Make it one play. Yeah, one play. One play. We yeah. we, 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 we we suck it up for one play, get in there. If not, okay, we're gonna go to overtime and lose anyway because we're tired. But we're, we're ridiculous. I I I I think the the, the commanders are the right it, side here. The commanders too tend to play the Eagles very close. Remember last season they were the the yep. the, the, the team that ended their undefeated season, mm-hmm. um, and they just the way they play defensively with their defensive line. Uh, the one concern I have for Washington is this: they're giving them too many sacks, right? It's not just all their fault. Sam Howell runs into a lot of them too against the Eagles' defensive line. It's a problem. But yeah. this is one of those division matchups where the Commanders sort of have the number of the Eagles. It doesn't end up winning. But all we need is a cover. It's all we need is a cover. All we need is a cover. So Commanders by six or buy it yeah. up to seven. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. It might. Do you think it's going to get to seven? I don't think it? it'll get to seven. Yeah, the sharps will be over that, right? If it gets to six, seven, seven. it'll be gone in a second. Let's get to an NFC North matchup here: Minnesota. At Green Bay, Green Bay getting a point here. Total is 42. Minnesota's 3-4 and four for the thrilling win. Gets the Niners on Monday Night Football. They're 3-3-1 three, three against the spread. The Packers are 2-4. and four. They dropped a close game on the road at Denver, but are 3-3 three and three against the spread. Bear, I'm going to be, I'm proud of myself here. I didn't watch a single snap of, of Packers. And, I did and, not either. And, uh, and, and Broncos. I did not either. I feel proud of myself for that. Yeah, we, we, uh, we were watching. Uh, Chiefs. We were watching Chiefs oh, and, and, and Steelers, Steelers yeah. in the household, yeah. It's what, it's what we had. So where are we going here? Packers, of course. Right. It's a, it's a, we have to make this way. They, they were as terrible offensively as you could be in Denver last week. Jordan Love potentially looks lost. Kirk Cousins is going to throw for him as 400 yards again like he did again Monday night against. Yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, when everybody zigs, use that. Viking People Perfect. are talking about the Vikings maybe sneaking into the NFC wild card race. Maybe they won't trade play, players now. Still on that win on Monday night. No one you couldn't be lower on the Packers. Remember that with, with Green Bay, though. In four, all four games this year by four points or fewer. Three have been decided by one or two points. So yeah. while the record's bad, it, it, they are in a coin flip game almost every week, and maybe the coin comes up their head, comes up heads for them this week. And maybe the, uh, the Packers uh, plus one. There are some plus ones out there. This is just the classic NFL game, where again throughout the last NFC week, North. but like one team looks so bad, the Packers. Mm-hmm. One team looks so good, the Vikings. Mm-hmm. And everyone is on the, I'm looking at it right now. And I know that the, the, the splits for tickets and bets is not always the best way to wager in a game, but a lot of people have, have tickets on the Vikings with a little bit of money and a little bit of tickets on the Packers and a lot of bit of money. Like this is this, you just take the Packers here. You hold your nose, you do it because that's the right wager to make in this situation. There, there's no like football reason per se. Like no. I, I, I'm not like, Oh, the Packers have this. Do they do this? Well, right. it's just the Vikings fading the Vikings off a minor football win on the road in Green Bay. Green Bay is desperate for a win. But back against the wall thing in the NFL, especially last weekend, it, it really mattered. Again, these are professionals, man. Like, we, we know where we are. Like, we know where we need to win. And the Packers have to win this game. Well, that's it. Two yep. and five. That's done. it. They're done. Let's get to one more game here before we get to the gambling group chat and our best bets and our survivor. Remember, we got survivor here. I'm still alive. I don't know if you are, Bear. I'm a survivor. Um, Vegas Raiders at the Lions. Lions favored by eight and a half. Saw that this morning. 46 and a half is the total. Hi, my friend. It's nine now? Up to nine. Up to nine. Okay. Lions favored by nine right now. Total 46 and a half. Raiders are three and four. Uh, I don't think I would have guessed they had three wins. I just, I wouldn't have guessed. If you told oh, me. Worst three win yeah, team in they, football. They got blown out by the Bears. Uh, the three and four against the spread. The Lions got embarrassed on, on Sunday. In Baltimore, they're five and two straight up and five and two against the spread. Where are we going here? This, nine, this line is, I think, climbing eight and a half to nine. And probably you probably wait a little bit, and you'll get nine and a half. I would think. No tens. I don't think it'll hit ten, but I'm I'm, I'm I think <laughs> I'm going to take the, the the Raiders plus, yeah. plus the points here. I think last week we kind of saw what was coming with Detroit. Yeah, I think you're looking at a, at a, a side on a home game Monday night, big favorite coming off of a loss. I think most people will be 
on the Lions there, but I'd be a little hesitant. I, I, you, you they toasted the league last week, and you get absolutely punched in the mouth yeah. and totally humbled, and by it, the score, the game wasn't even as close as the score was in in, in the in the Ravens. Game well, the th- Ravens were thirty five nothing and shut it, it down. It was it was, and I wonder like for a, a young team that psyche had some injuries like. Well, we really aren't that good. Now, we'll see. It, it, it's going to be, a, yeah. a, a, I think, a difficult cho- coaching job this week for Dan Campbell to get his team back together and kind of instill some confidence because I, I think maybe internally they are asking some questions now and nine and a nine, nine, nine maybe nine. It's a lot of points in the NFL. A lot of points. And, again, I know the Raiders are awful. <laughs> I know they are. Don't get me wrong. So I'm going to hold my nose <laughs> on Monday night. We want to watch, uh, watch Joe and Troy and – you're going to be on the side of the sharp. I mean, no one's going to bet the Raiders. Correct. So you're going to have that going for you Monday. Yes. Everyone, all the you, we're going to see all those tweets on Monday that 95% yep. of tickets are on the Lions, but, yep. but good luck. The Raiders right. winning, the, good, the, the Raiders winning the Raiders outright buddy, will be I, a good result for the sports ball. Oh, yeah. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> I love those tweets so much. Like, Gee, thanks. <laughs> I wish you luck, man. I, I don't have, I can't convince myself. <laughs> the Raiders. I, it's the right side. I mean, it's it's uh, uh, the 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 mindset makes it makes right, right? If the Raiders just off a bad loss again, like they have to try. And we don't know who's playing quarterback for them. Maybe Jimmy G's back. I don't know. And then the Lions, obviously, you know, mentally, they have not been in this spot in a long time. Where they're 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 good as a team. They're good. We know that. Oh yes, they are. And they're supposed to be good and lost a bad football game. And how do they react to losing that bad football game? We don't know. So it's a good wager to make on sort of fading that idea of like, we don't really know about the Lions. So, so far, Bear has Commanders plus six and a half, Green Bay plus one, and the Raiders. The Raiders. Plus nine. Plus nine. All right. Time for the gambling group chat. We cover all things NFL, MVP odds, number one seed, which games were taken, which props were taken, it's going to be the Bear, Will Hill, Sammy P, and myself. Take a listen, everybody. Gambling group chat time again with myself, Jeff, Will Hill, Sammy P. It's amazing how in the NFL every, everything is so fickle. It goes from one extreme to the other. Oh, Mr. Irrelevant, Brock Purdy, what a great story. To now, oh, Brock Purdy stinks. He threw a couple of interceptions, and now he's out. Uh, we believe he's out uh, against the uh the Bengals on Sunday afternoon, and we saw the line go from six down to three, three and a half. And some, and, and, and the, the, the opinions on this are really interesting because like people thinking that there hasn't been a big enough line move, that Purdy's worth more to the line, the people that don't think he really is worth much to the line, that he's been overrated and this regression was coming. Like we talked about, well, Maybe we haven't talked about it before, but I do have a very strong opinion on this game uh, coming up from my, from my best bet. But 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 Jeff, where where do you stand on 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 this game with, with Cincinnati yeah. and San Francisco? Whether it's from uh, the, the the Niners' offensive, like, we don't we don't know if Trent Williams is going to play yeah. either, and then or is it maybe a time to hop in on Cincinnati like for futures or stuff? Well, we'll find out basically about the system, right? The, the quarterback system and, and, and uh, whether or not the Shanahan system is, is booing Brock Purdy or whether Sam Donald can come in and run it just fine. And I think that if Debo's back, which I'm not quite sure he will be this weekend uh, and the, the offense is whole with Trent Williams back and they didn't, they didn't miss Trent that much against the Vikings. I think it's the Bengals, their pass rush is a little bit better. Like they might miss him a little bit here. Um, but I, the, the contrarian play, which has worked the last couple of weekends, right. Has been sort of wagering, on the team who's who has the backup quarterback playing, right? Like we saw that with the Browns a couple of weekends ago, like it, it, Gardner Minshew last weekend with with the Colts. It feels like the Niners here still at home need to play better defensively against a Bengals team that's been up and down, but a little more trending upwards. I the Niners at minus three are the play here, guys. I, I'm curious what, what what you think, Sammy. You're gonna lay three with Darnold, huh? You're gonna do it? <laughs> yeah. I'm fine with that okay. because I, because I, I think that I, I think the system is the reason why things go so well there. I mean, he's played, he's, he's had good offenses with bad quarterbacks before. I've got Purdy worth two and a half points to the line in that system. So, I mean, I'm, I was never going to say anything higher than three and that you look at the market from six to three and a half. So it's pretty much right on. What um, it is. Bear brought up the uh, futures. How about this? I was looking at a lot of these books. 
So the Bengals have the longest odds to win the division, the AFC North, and it makes yes. sense. But then you look at the odds to win the AFC, and the Bengals have the second best odds from the North because the narrative is if they get in, Burrow's going to give them a shot. And I think, I think that team just looks a lot different the last few weeks because Burrow's actually healthy. Um, I don't love the Bengals catching three and a half when I could have gotten six. It's a stay away game for me, but my advice would be if you're looking at Cincinnati futures from this point forward, because if they win this game, they're probably going to make the postseason. Like This is a swivel game for them. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but if they beat the Niners on the road, they're probably going to, their, their odds are going to explode in the future market. But I would rather you bet them to win the AFC at 15, 20 to one than to win the North at five to one because Baltimore is winning the North. If you're looking for Bengals stuff, look further down the road. I've been anti Cincy all year uh, before the season, during the season. I'm on him here. I think this is a good time for a buy for Burrow, get that calf health here. He can move around a little bit. We know that the rest of the talent is there and I'm just not a Darnold guy. I, I, I watched him a lot with the jets. Just not a fan. I, I have been a fan of Purdy. I think he's underrated. I think this narrative that, you know, he just throws screen passes and anyone can do it is unfair. And if you look even the other night, like, all right, he threw two picks at the end, but he played pretty well until then. And uh, if you see now, and, and it was weird how it came about like Wednesday, at five o'clock, four o'clock Eastern, we find out he had a concussion. And if you look at, first of all, the hit was a nasty hit on a QB sneak. He really got leveled. Uh, and he, his split before that hit and after that hit, there's a huge difference. So to me, I'm a Purdy guy. I'm not a Darnold guy. I think this is a good spot for Cincy. San Fran's still a little banged up with, with Debo probably not playing. Um, I'm going to take Cincy here plus the points. I think it's a close game. I could easily see this being a field goal game too. San Fran gets on track with a win. They do it by three and move on. So I, I like the three and a half. That's a key number right there. Will, have you gotten off of any of the preseason Bengals uh, missed the playoffs and uh, season win total under? Have you gotten off any of those yet? Yes, I, I did play under 11 and a half before the season, under nine and a half after the first couple of weeks and bought back on some some yes plus playoffs, some over eight and a half. So if it's uh, if it's nine and a half, if they land nine and eight and they make the playoffs or even, you know, just nine and eight either way, uh, that, that's a good result for me. But I, I think they'll make a run here. This is this has been since he's MO where they start slow and then they, you know, pick up steam as, as the uh, you know, as the season goes on. And that's one of the better defensive coordinators, too. So if you're giving him extra time to prep for San Francisco, that's you know something to keep in mind for this game as well nine nine and eight we're meeting at, at jay tim's honey gold yes. wings on you plenty of them sure uh, what, what, what else it's, it's interesting because a couple of weeks ago we were talking about like super bowl odds and like how many teams in theory could win the super bowl like doesn't it seem like it's really kind of narrow like is anybody really taking the Dolphins seriously to win no. the super bowl now no anybody really taking the cowboys seriously no. to win the super bowl now but doesn't it feel like Chiefs, Niners, yes. Eagles, Ra Ravens? Maybe Ravens? I mean, the Ravens, maybe? I think, have to show it in the postseason before we believe it, right? I mean, the Chiefs right now are 6-1. and one. Their offense is sort of getting rolling. They have a three-game division lead. <laughs> they're number one in the AFC right now. And according to DVOA, they're, number, they're top five in offense, defense, special. This is the best team they've had since Patrick Mahomes has gone there. And their offense is still sort of not clicking in a way that it should. I mean, it's Baltimore going to Kansas City in the postseason and being them in Kansas. I mean, the one team that I that I think can do it is the Bengals because they've shown they can do it. But I haven't seen anyone else step, step up to the plate yet and be able to defeat Kansas City in Arrowhead besides Tom Brady did it in, in 2018 and the Bengals did it a few years ago. So Baltimore is on the right track. I think they have a sort of a trappish game in Arizona this weekend, but I got to see them do it in the postseason before I declare they're the ones that can beat the Chiefs in Arrowhead. Yeah, it is a stinky spot for the for the for the Ravens, but Arizona, I think, is coming back down to earth. They they have not looked great the last few weeks. But you're right though. Last the first half last week, I think, was the first time like that was beautiful to watch. The off the the yeah. offense execution of both the Chargers and the Chiefs in that first half was before they went completely scoreless almost the entire the entire second half. What about what about the Bills like? Like what we saw from them, like the Sunday night game against the Giants was an abomination that they probably should have lost. Didn't look good last week, giving up a late touchdown to to the Patriots and Mac Jones to drive the length of the field after appear that they were going to get out with another gross win. Like if you look at odds to mid, we talk about the Bengals, how maybe we've turned on them and now maybe they are going to make the playoffs, but if they make the playoffs, someone's not going to make the playoffs. Like, 
are the Bills worth a ch- worth a worth a, worth a play here at at a, at, a, at a number like close to two to one to to miss the playoffs? Like we know, we know Milano's out, we know Trey White is out, uh, we we know they, they they've got some issues on the offensive side of the bike. Will, would you take a shot at the uh, the Bills to miss the playoffs at like close to plus two, plus two hundred? Plus one seventy two is the number that, that that you've got on Buffalo. Like like that's a cup two. Well, the Jets I think obviously are clear going to miss the playoffs, but but two of those other teams are going to miss. You know, it's interesting because the, by the time people listen to this, it's going to be Friday or the weekend, and, and Buffalo's obviously playing on Thursday night, so that's going to be a different yeah. number regardless. If they ever lost to Tampa, you're looking at you know probably a toss up to miss the playoffs, and if they right. don't, <laughs> it's uh you know it's a better number in terms of you know maybe you're getting two to one. So when you bet these, sometimes as important as is what you bet. I mean, Sammy talked about Mahomes a few weeks ago, seven, eight, nine to one or whatever to win MVP. Now he's plus two seventy five. Like at plus two seventy five, it's not a good bet when a few weeks ago it was. Uh, but di- directionally, I agree with you. I I mean, this team is just missing so many guys on defense. Milano is one of the most important, you know, non-injury, uh, non-quarterback injuries you could possibly have. Allen doesn't look healthy. Um, and I just, I, I, I go back to the 13 seconds a few years ago against the Chiefs. I don't know as a franchise if they ever mm-hmm. recovered from those 13 seconds. They would have been home against the Bengals. They could have won the Super Bowl, you know, against the Rams. Uh, Jeff knows as a player, you don't get those opportunities where that's in your lap to win a Super Bowl right in front of you every year. And I, I just don't know that they've ever recovered from that. Jeff? They've actually gone backwards. They The, the year before, they put the Chiefs in the AFC Championship game, right? And then a divisional round playoff loss, and then the divisional round, excuse me, a wild card round, right? Last season, home playoff loss. And now they keep to me, a lot of the parallels. We talk about college football, obviously, it's like USC, right? Like what what are, what does Buffalo and what do USC do well? It's like I, I hope our quarterback makes enough crazy plays for us to win a football game. Like that's what right. the Bills do well right now. Is Josh Allen, I, I hope he wins it for us. And you mentioned look, the Milano injury is big because the last couple of weeks their defense has really gone south and it's a big loss for them. And, but you're a professional team, man. You have to find a way to overcome a couple injuries. Everyone has to do that. That's the NFL. Everyone gets hurt, find a way to win. And right now, Buffalo to me is an unserious contender. And they see now would I take them to miss the playoffs. Probably not that drastic. Um, but obviously, as we record this on Thursday, if they lose, if they lose to Tampa Bay, I mean, they're four and four with losses to Tampa Bay, the Jets, and the Patriots obviously lost to Jacksonville in London. I just think they're right now, they don't know what they are. They don't have an identity. And they they, they have to figure it out fast because the AFC is very good. And if they don't, they're not going to go very far in the playoffs. Yeah. Last I week, I think we were all there? kind. Go ahead. Go ahead, yes. go ahead Sammy. Yeah, the schedule. Here's the schedule down the stretch for Buffalo. You're at Philly Thanksgiving weekend. Then you get the bye at Kansas City. Then you get Dallas at home at the Chargers. Could be one and three in that stretch. Then you're home against the Patriots and you end the season January 7th at Miami. That is the toughest end of any schedule in the NFL. Good point. That's uh, that's it's I, I think the Cowboys have another difficult finish, but yeah, that's uh yeah, on the road. I mean, yeah, you, you get it, you get the idle week in between, but at Eagles, at Chiefs, back to back, that's that's uh no no bueno. They 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 better rack up some wins here. Uh Assuming, hopefully, they will have beaten Tampa by the time you listen to this. But yeah, you you, you better beat Denver and the Jets at home, <laughs> or, or else yeah, that that price gonna gonna plummet dramatically. Uh, we, we we were kind of all over it last week with the uh, with with the Lions going going to the Ravens. Like it, it, it was a, a a complete annihilation, and and, and the Ravens just pummeled uh, the the hype train that were the Detroit Lions. This this game looks like it's headed towards nine nine and a half, don't you think, Sammy? On Monday night, Monday night, the get out game, home favorite, laying close to double digits against the probably backup quarterback again for the uh, the, the the terrible terrible Las Vegas Raiders. I don't know yeah. if this will hit Some ten. Do you think? Of, you think, you think it'll hit ten? I don't know about yeah. ten. You'll get I mean, resistance at ten. I don't know about ten. I mean, we're already seeing some nines here. Um, but that, that thing opened seven and a half. I don't know how many wise guys are going to want to lay nine, nine and a half, uh, when a lot of them are already clearly laid seven and a half, eight. Um, cause those nines are sort of dead numbers, but I, I don't know. I, I like, you know, that totals got hit too, 44 and a half up to 46, 46 and a half draft Kings. Um, I, I want to see if Detroit can mentally bounce back here. I think that's a fair concern. I, I'm, I don't love Vegas in this spot, but to lose 38 to six and get absolutely pantsed. I think it's 
I think it's lazy to think they're just going to go home on Monday night and roll I Vegas. Agree. Vegas sucks. But I I don't want to bet that game with your money, Bear. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I, I actually did bet it with my money and grabbed nine. So yeah, I kind of, as I was talking, wow. telling Jeff earlier, I, I kind of felt the same way. Like you get, you kind of get punched in the face. You, you take a step back and you might reevaluate like, okay, are, are we really th- this good? And I, I know, I know Dan Campbell's done a, a, a good job kind of build, building them up and making them believe in themselves and kind of having that bullish mentality. But I don't know. Nine, nine feels like a lot. And I, 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 I grabbed it. The NFL is the best sport at humbling you, right? They, they humble two weeks ago, right? Remember, Niners are defeated. Brock Purdy, MVP, yep. lose to the Browns. Last week, we had a discussion here about the Lions as the one seed. We had a legit discussion. Do we put money? Lions as the one seed. Dan Campbell coach here, Jared Goff, MVP. They get their asses kicked by the Ravens. And so it's, it, it's how you bounce back from that humbling, right? The Lions have not been good enough to sort of be humbled like this in many, many years. So now you come back home. Uh, are you honest with yourself about why you lost that game? Are you honest with yourself about how to get better? And so I could see them coming out slow against the Raiders, but I mean, the Raiders are just really, really stinky. Like they, they are, they are just a bad football team. Max Crosby's good. And that's it. Like they don't have any, they have no one else. It's like, it's like big cats, power ratings. Oh, so ass, funny. Yes, ass, yes. super ass. <laughs> yes. like, uh, Raiders super Ra- Ra- Raiders, Raiders, Raiders fall on the super ass. For, yeah. For, and, for, for sure. It, Sammy's bears won a game though with, uh, with whoever that quarterback is. I don't, I'm not going to pronounce his name. I have no idea who it is. Secret agent, man. Tyson. Like agent. Are, are the, the most, what'd you say last week? The, the, the favorite bears player of all time is the backup quarterback. There we go. Yeah, another remember- win for, for your boy. I remember when Jay Cutler was there and he was throwing like the bears have never had a quarterback throw for 3,500 yards ever. And, you know, he's getting close <laughs> to the, the meatballs, the, the bills and the Babs, they want Josh McCown. I'm like, you people are lunatics. You know, you don't want Jay Cutler to start a quarterback. So now this Tyson Bajan is the most popular guy in Chicago. And going on the road against your favorite team, uh, the, the, the Los Angeles chargers who, Oh, completely geez. fell apart in the second half in Kansas. Like, of course, that, that was like the first game the Chargers have played, like ever, that has been a multiple score game. It's the first time Justin Herbert and Patrick Mahomes have played each other. There's a, there was five previous games, the sixth time that that game has not been within six points in either direction. And it's the first time, obviously, in regulation has been within three points. And it was 24 17. At halftime, yeah. it did not go over, which was shocking. And it looked like the Chiefs were like legitimate trouble where they may yeah, not win. Yeah, yeah. Their defense has not allowed over 20 points all season, which is pretty remarkable. It's crazy. I, it's, their defense is playing well. But the Chargers, man, I love Justin Herbert. I, I was I was one of the few people that thought he'd be good. Oregon uh, homer. A good Yes, I am Oregon homer. But I watch every snap of his. It kind of helps to evaluate him. But is there some blame on him eventually for this? Like, is it all Brandon Staley's fault? Because I don't know what's... Like, there's nothing I, when I watch Herbert play, I think to myself, oh, he's not playing well, but he doesn't win a lot of football games anymore. Like, the team is not, he's, he's under 500 as a starter, quarterback wins, I get it. But, like, does he get blamed at some point for them not winning the amount of games they're expected to win? I think he should. Will, I'm going to throw this out to you because I think you might have an opinion on this. It's complicated. I, I mean, it's not, you, you don't want to sit here and just make excuses for them, but even though it's probably, you know, it's, what it's going to sound like, they have no, every game for them is a road game. I don't, I don't think they're well coached. I don't think that's a great team around. And we all hear about, you know, Austin Eckler. I don't think Austin Eckler's have had a, a thousand yard rushing season. So I don't think it's a great, um, you know, systems, surroundings, just, I don't think he's in a great position. Look, as a Vikings fan, I mean, you could have all my first round picks for the rest of my life. I'll take Justin <laughs> Herbert, but at, at some point <laughs> you do have to win some games. Uh, he does leave you feeling a little empty where it's like, all right, they're, they're down seven. I think they first and goal and he throws, you know, a tip pass interception that he does feel in you like, you know, you, you should be a little better. You should win a little more with him. So he's had the ball at the end, of a lot of these games and, and he hasn't been able to come through. So uh, I think that's fair to start to criticize him a little bit. Yeah, I think that there is some note out there about number of like interceptions he's thrown in like one score games yeah, like, in the yeah, fourth like two, quarter. Two that, 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 that's kind of, that's kind of kind of damning for him. I do. You, well, I was so funny you said that because that's one of my favorite things on an NFL weekend. But when the opposing team goes into SoFi and just absolutely takes it over like the Steelers did against the Rams. I was watching it with my wife and just Steelers uh, hear a huge roar. My wife's like, oh, no, what happened? I'm like, 
Oh, the Steelers scored. Don't worry. You, you're good. <laughs> yes, I, I love when the opposing like they have no fans, and then the opposing fans just go in there, and and, and it's a home game. It, hey, well, it's it, it, it's, it's the NFL. Not, These I'm, margins I'm, I'm, are so yeah. close. Like the the games are so close. It's it's just the the smallest margin where being at home you know matters or it's supposed to matter. And when it, every game's a road game, that that's a huge difference. I don't know, Jeff, as a player, like, can you imagine where every game is basically a home game, uh, a road game, where you know you're in your home building and everyone's rooting against you? I do think it matters. On the other side, though, is is the visiting team. I've I've been in a situation where as the Chiefs, we played in San Diego, and the entire stadium was just red with Chiefs fans. There is a little bit of energy you get as a road player when you see that your fans outnumber the home team's fans. So, like, if you're a Steelers fan, you're or, or excuse me, so you're a Steelers player, and you and you show up and you run out of that tunnel for for the kickoff, and you look up and you see black and gold everywhere, like you that fires you up. When you score a touchdown on the road and it's louder for your touchdown than it is for the for the home team touchdown. Um, I've never been the other situation, <laughs> fortunately, where it's been the other way around. But I can imagine if you're a Chargers player, how demoralizing it is to hear the crowd cheer for the other team louder than your team. And then look, you have, you have to go in silent count all the time on offense, which is a bear to do all the time. It'd be nice every now and then just go in regular cadence. So it's got to be disheartening if you're a Chargers fan, but the Chargers shouldn't move to LA. There's there's I'm from Los Angeles nope. guys. There's not, there's some fans that are Rams fans that were, that were there when the Rams used to be in LA. There's not a single person who's a Chargers fan. Zero people in Los Angeles ever root for the Chargers, ever. You move to LA, what do you expect to happen? You're not going to get a fan base to grow overnight. So it's going to take 20, 30 years for kids that are Charger fans now to be to become adults, to buy season tickets, and to root for the Chargers. And, and they're going to have this happen each and every week for 20 more years. Well, we know they have at least one. Bear, how about this? Bear, oh, there's, yes. a, uh, there's an interesting nugget here on the Chargers. We all know that they are perennial underachievers. We've talked about it for weeks now. Since Justin Herbert became the L.A. quarterback or the San Diego quarterback or the San Juan Capistrano quarterback, whatever, they are 14 and 21 ATS. So they've only covered 14 of 35 games when they are laying points with Herbert. So I, I can't interest you in the uh, in the Chargers minus eight and a half on Sunday against the Bears. Against, nope. against the against the bed, the most popular bear ever, the backup quarterback. Nope. What about for survive? We, would you dare put your survivor life on oh. the line with with, oh. with, the, with the Chargers against the Bears this week? Like like, like you, you, it's like sacrilegious. It's like a hellscape to do that. But if you're ever going to do it, this is the week. Good luck. <laughs> How about I actually the words. I'm well, going to tease so the like Chargers. <laughs> oh. yeah i mean yeah but yeah, te tease the chargers down through three and just lay two and a half yeah exactly what could, what, what could possibly go a, wrong a, a ravens oh. a ravens chargers teaser this weekend Not, no oh no no oh. can't, can't, can't interest you in that oh no, no. There's so many primetime yeah, teaser candidates too, with Bills, with uh, you know, you mentioned Ravens, Chargers, Detroit Lions. on Monday night. That's probably why. Yeah, that's probably why they move that number to nine. They're probably just getting hammered with teasers left and right with all these, you know, primetime games: Chargers, Ravens, Bills, uh, and then you know, connect it with the Lions. They probably wanted to move that out of teaser range. You know, you know, it might be a good... Pittsburgh plus eight and a half might be a good teaser leg, don't you think? Against Jacksonville. Yep, every game's close with them. I mean, you, you never want to tease it if you can get a plus three because you're like, hey, if I like him, I'll just take him plus three. But that that certainly would be a good look, I would think. Um, what else have we got? But, you know, obviously, it looks like the Titans are, uh, I don't want to say tank mode, but they're getting rid of assets. We've seen that number move to Atlanta minus three now oh, man. against... The Titans are so good at, at variable home underdog, but I'm not sure you can even touch this game right now with, with first time quarterback. Yeah, I was going to say with, with Willie Levi's and Malik Willis, Sammy, can I can I interest you in uh, Malik Willis and Sammy and uh, Willie Levi's plus three at home against uh, Arthur Smith and Desmond Ritter? No, can I interest you in over thirty five and a half though? Oh no, huh? Mm. Can we go over thirty five and a half? Pair? That's oh. a service academy game right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man no you can't no me. i can't no, no like chance. that game could be 20 to 7 i'm not gonna watch a second of that game though too that's like e an unwatchable game even though i will say this with th that trio of quarterbacks 
you do have a good opportunity at a, at a pick six or not offensive score. Sure. Desmond Ritter fumbling the ball oh, through the end so zone bad. again. He cannot like, stop fumbling. He cannot, he's like, a turnover machine, and they keep playing him. I, I don't understand because the Falcons, I know they're winning enough games to maybe justify it in the end. Don't you? But, can't, why aren't you playing Heineke? But the, pro, the thing about it is that they treat him like a first-round pick. It was a fourth, where, round, fifth round pick, fourth round third, pick, right? third, third or fourth round. But they treat him like a first round pick where they keep giving these opportunities. You don't, you don't have to do that, right? Now, obviously, they don't even give their first round picking opportunities, but like you don't have to treat him that way, right? You can bench him and put in Heineke, who has shown the ability to, he's a high variance guy, but the, the high is a lot better than what, than what Ritter's giving you right now. It's not good. Falcons game. Do you know how hard it is to I keep hate, a I game hate. under 35 and a half, though, in 80 degree weather with no wind? Like, I, I get it if it's in Buffalo and it's 30 mile an hour winds and it's snow. I, okay, I'll bet under. But I'm looking at the forecast now in Nashville. It's 83 degrees with seven mile an hour winds. It's perfect football weather. Like, it's great for offense. I'm not betting under 35 and a half. <laughs> but will you bet over? I bet over. Yeah, 35 and a half. Right. They could probably get that in half. I'd love to sit there and watch Sammy watch this game with like a camera on Sammy as it's three nothing at the two minute warning and he's just sitting there pulling his hair out. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> uh, oh, we, we talked about one uh, tenant of SoFi, the other one, the Rams, like one of those impossible box score losses against the, the Steelers last week. Feels like they might be a popular dog this week getting six and a half in Dallas, don't you think? I would imagine so. I mean, they, they should have at least gone to overtime in that game, right? I mean, that, or at least had an opportunity, I should say, to go to overtime because yeah. Kenny Pickett was clearly short. And, yes. And they, they got screwed out of that one. Um, you know, I, again, McCarthy against a really good coach in Sean McVay against a good quarterback in Matt Stafford. I mean, the advantage is to Sean McVay in a coaching matchup here, right? So you're, you're basically wagering on that part of this game is being a big part. I mean, McCarthy gets out coach all the time and they have a coach like, like Sean That's McVay really nice. father now, Sean McVay, the yes. father um, who has a little extra motivation this week and some father power there. Um, I would take the Rams. I, I'm not wagering on this game, but I think I, I would take the Rams over the Cowboys. Will Sammy and any, any thoughts on uh, Dallas and the Rams? I, mean, I, I would, if I, I'd play the Rams if I had to just knowing that between cup Nakua those receivers and Matthew Stafford, that they, they can at least put points on the board yes. against Dallas, right? Yeah. Even though the old line's not great. I'm mad at the Rams after last week. That was a typical Steeler game where the Rams give away seven points with the kicker. <laughs> they miss two field goals. They miss an extra point. They had a couple of drops where it's like, all right, the Rams should be up, you know, 13, maybe 14, you know, 17 points. They're just pulling away. Pitt had done nothing. Then Pitt gets a, a tip pass, but I think Watt basically runs it back and, and they get a cheap touchdown. Yep. Then before you know it, Pittsburgh steals the game. Just typical Steelers football. So I, I I was not impressed with the Rams last week. I thought that was a terrible, terrible loss, terrible performance. But uh, I'm not looking to lay six, six and a half with Dallas. Dallas is off a of bye, so you figure you get their best effort, their focus, their best punch. But nothing I'm willing to bet here. Pittsburgh, uh, we, we mentioned a potential teaser leg here. Two and a half point home dog against uh, Jacksonville, who seems to be playing better as we go along. Anything? Uh, I, I think Sammy wrote this week. He likes Jacksonville right before it gets to three, Sammy. Yeah, I would take it now. I, I just, I think this Pittsburgh team is, I mean, it's good, but it's not great. And it's certainly a, a number grab for me. I, I, I wanted to lay it before it got to three. I think I laid some two. Um, all these write-ups run together. You know, you get an email on Monday, like, hey, write this up. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you do it. Um, hold on, let me, can I throw a baby Ruth in the pool, Bear? Do you mind? Of course you can. Bartender course, loves Houston. Go ahead. He's wow. all over Houston. He's <laughs> that's not a baby. Ruth. That's not a baby Ruth. You're throwing in the pool. That that's a that's a gold bullion that that you're putting in there. That's of he course he does. Me literally an hour ago and goes, I love Houston minus three. And then I said, Why? And he said, Carolina blows. So nice. that's it. I mean, that's that's all you need to know. That's right it. There. Simple approach. See the ball right, hit the Bryce ball. Young. <laughs> yep. Rookie Bryce Young can look like the road, like, laying three. Yep. What could go wrong? It sounds Look, like every. It sounds like ninety five percent of conversations I have with people that gamble that aren't you guys. They're like, I, "Gotta take Houston here. Panthers stink. Beautiful. It's, oh, it's the best. Beautiful. The Panthers plus three. Gotta take them now. You, you gonna go to the game? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be right there. Uh, new, look, I, the one seriously. Thing, no, I'm not going to the game. <laughs> the 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 one thing I'll tell you about the Panthers kids, though. Kids that's would like to go to the game. What? Maybe your kids would like to go to the game. Uh, no. We're not doing that. 
Wow. Yeah. Father of the year over here. No, um, I'm not taking them to the Texans game. Maybe I'll choose a better team at some point. Nonetheless. Go see the, the first two picks of the draft. Or like first and third. First and third. First and third. No, first and second. Will Anderson went three, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, then they yeah, traded back one, up. Two, yeah. Three, yeah, three, two, three. Yeah, I, I, two. yeah, I'd be excited. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> no. Anthony Richardson went four. I know that too. Uh, yeah. the, 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 they'll, they'll be all of four of four hundred fans of that game. More game, more more fans of the Stanford game, Washington game, or Panthers Texans. Good poll question. Yeah, because Washington I, fans will go to Palo Alto. Houston Texans fans aren't flying to to Charlotte. Yeah, but I, I think it's still the NFL. It's, it, Have you seen the stadium? Have you seen the Panthers fans? They're not going to be there. New, they, don't want, they don't want to see Thomas Brown and his offensive coordinator. Well, so so that's the question, right? It's like if you're on the Panthers this week. Oh, I'm think, on the Panthers this week now. Do you think Thanks, Sammy. we're all going to be? Because thank you, bartender, who's a real person. I actually thought it was just Sammy playing a bit for so many years. Um <sighs> The, look, they they have a new OC. Like maybe Thomas Brown brings them something that Frank Wright couldn't, and and they're off a bye, so there's a chance that we see a new style of offense, some new things out there. Bryce Young hasn't played terrible, but the wide receiving options you know aren't great. The offensive line has struggled a little bit times, but getting a little bit better. So I think they're if you're wager on them, you're hoping that they're off a bye with a sort of a brand new offensive identity, make things easier for Bryce Young, do some easier things for him, and you're fading a Texans team that the bartender likes. Yeah, they've played I better it. recently. I, I will say we're we're pretty deep into the show here. The host of the show, the Bear, Chris Felica, has completely sandbagged us because his Jets have a chance to go over 500. They have a chance to beat the Giants to go four and three. Then they play home versus the Chargers, the Raiders. This Jets team could be six and three, and we haven't mentioned that Bear is completely sandbagging us. He's he sees the schedule, he sees the record. There's... He's getting excited without telling us what's going on with the Jets here, Bear. They, 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 there's zero chance they're going to be six and three, and there's zero chance I'm laying three with them this week against the Giants. The Giants are one and a half games out of the wild card spot in the NFC right well, now. If, oh the, if, if, if if the Giants make the <laughs> if the if the Giants make the playoffs, you're going to see me lined up, uh, looking to sell off every they little get so back thing I own. I think they get back. I think they get back Andrew Thomas this week and their center, though, which is definitely a big it's improvement. A big deal. For, and you'll need it against the Jets. Need it. So like, that does give you a little, if you're a little pumped. But the Giants in that stadium have been historically bad as as as, uh, as a favorite, but they're, they're not. I mean, they're covered. So the, the, the three points, I think, is a good spot to be if you're the Giants. Yeah, I, 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 cr- I can't play the game. I mean, I say, like, yeah, I, yes, you get excited about the Jets, and it's a little bittersweet because you think of what could have been. Yeah. But, they needed the Eagles to completely implode to win that game. Like you're, you're, you're relying on awful decisions, turnover. Like I just can't see it continue. Like, but that, that does bring a question though. Like if they somehow win eight or nine games, is Bob Sala getting the coach of the year mix? Well, if they, yes, if they, that win them, yes. Like, like Brian Dable last year, he normally is reserved for like best coach of the best team. But the last couple of years we've seen, it's gone to sort of like the best coach of the best story of the best improvement. Right. And, and if they get that way, then there's certainly a, a, a possibility. Can I interest you in, in one more game? The the chiefs are, are seven point favorites to Denver. They are historically terrible as large favorites until Taylor Swift entered the, enter the chiefs universe. So they're four and one against a spread since she four and one against the spread at games she's been at. Are you going to take? Your, are you going to take your kids to the eras? To, is the eras right? I would take them to the, the the concerts. Look like a ton of fun. I don't know if I make enough money to go to the concerts, but maybe one sure. day I, I I I I can afford to do it. The only thing, guys, here, I don't know if if you have spouses or anyone else that's really into Taylor Swift. But my wife decided this week that she's going to be into Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey, like Good super into it. Yeah. But the problem all, is all, all the I'm, years of you, you playing professional football didn't yeah. get her interested in the NFL. No, but now it is. But the problem guys, it, I'm very happy for Travis Kelsey. I'm very happy for Taylor Swift. I'm very happy that they're, they're cheering. I, I love all of it. Except now my wife, Chris believes that she can start trolling me about Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey being together and, and start calling the games as are we going to watch Taylor Swift's boyfriend play football? This is like a trend that was started on TikTok like a month ago. She's finally figured it out, and it, it's it's driving me crazy. Like we have, <laughs> I I can't watch a Chiefs game now without her talking about Taylor Swift, and it's a month late. She's a month late to the party. It just got to stop. It it, it, need, it just guys, it needs to stop. And it's hard to watch Chiefs games now because my my family will not stop talking about Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. Well, you just even have- my son mentioned it before bed the other day. She she, she said, "When is the next?" Tra- uh, Taylor Swift boyfriend game. 
Me? It's, 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 it's getting to the point where it's, just, it's a lot. It's a lot for me to deal with. But we, we, are, we are crossing over all of the, uh, the, so, the social media algorithms here. It's with the, Olivia Rodrigo on one pod, and Taylor Swift on the other. Like, like we're, we're, like we're going to have like teenage girls listening to, to the Bear Beds podcast. I hope now. so. It'd be good. It's, it's just, it's a, I'm happy for the relationship, but in my, in my own family, it's got to stop. We, we got we to gotta stop. We got to stop trolling me. It needs to stop. Just so, watch football game. so are you taking the Broncos? Oh, no, I'm not touching this game. No chance. Are you? Are you guys taking the Broncos plus seven? It would be Broncos or nothing. I just think, I mean, they, they played, what, a couple weeks ago and the game was actually pretty close. The Broncos have actually played a little better. Defense has played a little better. Like you mentioned, the Chiefs haven't been good as a uh, as a big favorite. So, you know, these division games are always close. The Chiefs always beat them, but these games are always pretty competitive. And getting back to Taylor Swift, I'm surprised nobody's put out props on will they get married? When will they break up? Like, I'm not into the Taylor Swift, Kelsey thing, but if you put a betting line on it in terms of, you know, some sort of marriage prop, some sort of when will they break up props? I'll bet on anything. So somebody should put out a line on it. <laughs> is there any doubt? Is there any doubt, boys, that the NFL would love to have Taylor Swift in Vegas at the Super Bowl? So here's what I did literally yesterday. I did a Michigan oh, no. and a Chiefs championship parlay. I did. 18 what to 1. That? You, you right. could bet it right now. 18 to 1. Not bad. Michigan is going to be undefeated D in the playoffs. Bear? No. Do you, do you hate it or do you? No, hate no, it? no, no, no. I, I was gonna, I was gonna embarrass myself because I, I, I heard, I didn't look it up, and maybe I'll give you another homework project to look up and in, in research. I had heard that the weekend of the Super Bowl, Taylor Swift, she has a show in Japan, and like people wow. were figuring out like. Could she get from Japan to Vegas in time for the Super Bowl, maybe to do to potentially either sing the anthem or perform at halftime if the Chiefs are in the slight? Like, they already have a halftime performer. I know they do, but yeah. they, they, they just, they, yeah. I don't know. Well, wouldn't you just want to just watch but, a game in the box? But, like, I actually, I'm, all right, I'm, I'm going to do it right now. Taylor Swift tour. I am. You guys continue the pot, and I'm going to confirm. She is, I mean, look, she's, yeah, that, she's uh, just a, a good luck charm for the Chiefs, obviously. Andy Reid likes her being there. Andy Reid said, hey, man, keep her coming. They're covering these spreads. They never cover with her in the crowd, man. It's it's paying off. She got, she got a touchdown dance now with her and and, and uh, Brittany Mahomes. Like, it's it's all it's all looking up for the Chiefs. Do you have information here? On 18 the to 1. I'm lo 18 to 1. Yep. Wednesday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, February 7, 8, 9, 10, the Tokyo Dome in Japan. So Saturday night, she gets on her, her, her private plane and gets all the way to Vegas in time for kickoff. And that can happen. It's Sunday night, right? Yeah, it can happen. And then she, she shoots back across to, uh, to Melbourne on uh, February 16th. I'll be in Turks and Caicos on, on, on that Of course day, you will. So. It's your favorite place in the world. I love Besides being here with me and, uh, and exactly. Will. And where, 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 where is she this weekend? Is she in? She anywhere this weekend? There's no tour right now. No, think. no tour right now. We no. start. Oh, we start. Um, international tour soon. We, we start. Uh, no, she's. It's October 26th. <laughs> she's in New Orleans tonight. Oh, nice. I didn't know that. We should go as a group, all four of us, to test. No, so, yeah, sure. No, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I'm looking at. I'm looking at. Presented by Arby's. I'm looking at. I'm screwing up the dates now. It says October. I'm like October 26th, Saturday. I'm like no. I'm like October 26th is today. So yeah, and this is October twenty sixth. The four of us should go 24. get some Arby's. But yes, yeah, she is in Tokyo to, in February. That much we know. We should go get Arby's together, the four of us, and then go sit at Taylor Swift concert. The four of us and just watch. And I, I think the show is great. I would totally go see her in concert. Would you guys? I just say, Will has daughters, right? I mean, you go with your daughters, right, Will? Uh, I like the Arby's part. I'd go I'm see Olivia Rodrigo for that first part of it. <laughs> <laughs> let's go get this show. Get, has get gone off we'll, the we'll, rails. We'll do that. Sammy's like, I want to talk, but wagering, and my screen is up right now. Where's the line movements at? This is all your fault for bringing up your wife and Taylor Swift's it's just, it's, playing it's football. Just, it's a, I need her to hear this. It's just, it, it's just my safe space. I need her to hear that the trolling has to stop. It's got to stop. I hope it doesn't. It's never going to stop. Good. It shouldn't stop. Uh, stopping. Stopping, uh, stopping at 269, 270, Sammy, I to speak your language. Cleveland. At Seattle, the, the, the Seabags, currently a four-point favorite now against P.J. Walker, DTR. Is Deshaun Watson ever going to play football again? I don't think so. He seems like he doesn't. 
he's ever going to play again. Well, why would you? You guarantee you, you just 230 mil, right? Guaranteed, take it. The problem with the Seattle, by the way, is that they're just playing some untrustworthy football right Damn now. right they are. Like, they should have won in Cincinnati. Last and weekend was... Tried a, hard was, to lose. And, I mean, that late field goal, thankfully they made it, so, so they covered. But they didn't play well against Arizona. Um, I fearful. I'm kind of fearful for their offense against the Browns' defense this weekend. I am too, Sammy. Two sixty nine, two seventy. We got we we got a play on that one. Two sixty nine money line bear. Best player on the field, Miles Garrett. I got a nice plus six fifty on him for defensive player of the year. That's that's um. I'm he's incredible. Right now. On that. that blocked field goal. You have to jump over and not touch anyone, or it's a penalty. Yeah. And he jumped over, Did didn't touch anyone, and blocked the field goal. And then he had a strip sack later in the game. Um, it, oh, he's he's playing good football, man. Yeah, yeah, that that would that I I I like that play because that Seahawks offensive line is not good. No, right now, no. Will we miss anything else out there? I think we might we hit on pretty much. Can, can I interest you uh, in, in the Ron Riverboat Ron Rivera? Uh, will he get fired? Uh, game. If they, I, no, I, I, I like the commodes this week getting six and a half. You can have them. How about this though? Wouldn't it be typical NFL? <laughs> like the Vikings look great on Monday night. They beat the 49ers. They're back. They're going to make the playoffs. The Packers, they stink. They lose to the Broncos. Wouldn't it be typical NFL for, for the Packers to turn around and just beat the Vikings? Because um, yes. at the end of the day, none of us they're really on, know anything about the on NFL. My ticket. Isn't that? Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just how it goes. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful sport when everybody zigs. You zag. Yeah. So let's zig and zag our way to some winners this weekend. Sammy will have a great weekend. So I think all we really pretty much decided in the gambling group chat is that we are going to both a Taylor Swift and an Olivia Rodrigo concert yes. with Arby's in tow. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I, I am very happy for Travis Kelsey, Taylor Swift. I've seen my family to stop caring about it. <laughs> Just let me watch my Chiefs games in, in, in privacy uh, by myself without any mention of anything happening otherwise. But I will tell you, man, all the fans are bringing to, are being brought to sport by this. Like, Correct. It, like it's, it's been a the phenomenon. NFL loves oh, this. Love every second of it. Every second all, of all it. All they are about, all, it is not, it, it, it's not common for a, a brand the, as big as the NFL to have a section of the demographic they haven't that they haven't touched. Yep. And it's, and this is, like the demographic that they have not yes. touched. And if you're getting in this demo, and it, it's fantastic. It's, Just like people love Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey talk, they love our Survivor talk, Bear. What are you doing do. for Survivor this week? Did you, who'd you do that? Who'd you go that with last week? I you went punching in. with, um, I'm going to pull up right here. No, we went Houston I hit a couple it. weeks ago. I, I hit Houston last, and then I did um, maybe Seattle. Yeah, it was. You said Seattle, Seattle, Seattle last week. Yeah. All right. I kind of hit on it a little bit in the, in the gambling group chat. Like I normally would never, ever, ever, ever suggest taking the hellscape that is a, San, a Los Angeles Chargers game. But don't you have to this week? Backup quarterback with the Bears. You're, 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 you're only game moving forward. You potentially would even think about using the Chargers. We would be against Denver. Yeah. But right. like... I Off think, of that performance in Kansas City in the second half, you, they, you I, I mean, win it, this game. If the right? Chargers don't win, Brandon says he's being fired. It's that simple, right? Like you would think so, but he probably should have been fired after last year or the year before. Because because if I use if I use them, I still have the Ravens, the Chiefs, the Cowboys, the Dolphins available. I hit the Dolphins this week too. I could just probably save them. I could probably just save the Dolphins and take and take I, the Chargers, right? Well, let, let's see. What do what the what do the Dolphins have moving forward? I mean, that's always the thing you need to look at the, and uh, there are good uh, data grids out there. Good NFL Survivor season planning, like like Miami. You got a bunch of opportunities to use Miami. They got they got they got a game against the the, the Raiders coming up at home. Yeah. They got the Titans at home. They so, got the Jets so, at home. So, 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 like, you, you like you'll probably you, you'll probably want to save the the Dolphins for for like a couple of weeks from now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I wouldn't use, I wouldn't use Baltimore this week. I, no, no. See, that, so that, much that, of the game, NFL. That game is know, scary. That game is that, super that, scary. That is an absolutely scary game against an Arizona team, which seems to be coming back down to earth a little bit, but they gave Seattle all they could handle. 
uh, last week. I'm sure people are going to be on the Lions Monday night. Big double, um, you know, double digit home favorite on Monday night. What could possibly go wrong? I think the Lions Nothing. will win, but I, I, I wouldn't, I don't think that game's going to be easy. If you're looking to roll the dice a little, yeah. if you don't want to use the Chargers, which I think would be my play if I were still alive in, in, in Survivor, what about the Colts? Team last week moved the ball up and down the field on the best defense in the league. We, we, we've seen Steichen's offense move the ball on a lot of people, even with whether it's yeah. Richardson or whether it's been Minshew, and they're in a toss-up game against the Saints, who are completely untrustworthy. Yeah. They got some problems on and off the field. Kamara hasn't been, it's been weird how they've used him. Derek Carr is the epitome of like mediocre. Like did you get behind the charge of the, uh, the Colts rather in a pick em game at home against the saints. So I think the, the, the problem for me there is I think Gardner Minshew is so up and down, you know, like he looked bad against Jacksonville. He looked good against right. the Browns. Like I, I just, the, I, I think the Chargers play is bold because it's the Chargers. The Chargers. <laughs> like, that, like, that, like that's enough risk for me is to take on the charge in that situation. Yeah, I mean, Bears fans will be there because there's no home field at SoFi. The Bears are not good. I know the Bears are. That, that's the, that's my point. <laughs> I, I think that I think the fact that the Bears are awful outweighs the Brandon Staley, the, the, the Brandon Staley experience on the other side. Okay, I'm, I'm with you there. So I'm going. I'm going Chargers. I, I, I you, you, everyone's going to hate me on Sunday night. I'm sure if they lose to the Bears, but just actually, here's the great hedge: you play Chargers and Survivor, and you play Brandon Staley, first coach to be fired. Bingo, done. How about that? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, because exactly. if he loses, oh yeah, yeah you, you just take Dean Spano's going to fire him. You think? Just take his office key like on the way out of the stadium on Sunday night if they lose this there's game. no tarmac firing because he's at home but Correct. it's essentially a tarmac fire yes it's like give, give me your keys get out of here yeah. well let's go over we'll send you your stuff let's go over the bets you've made so far before we get to our, our best bets here you have commanders plus six and a half at home hosting the eagles green bay plus one hosting the vikings and you have the raiders plus nine at the lions bear what is your best bet of the NFL? I love the 49ers. I love the 49ers. Lane, yeah, there are threes out there uh, against Cincinnati. Like everyone's jumping off. Lose a bad weather game in Cleveland. You'll you lose a game. Ward maybe could get the ball wrestled away before yeah. halftime. Purdy got concussed through a couple picks and a little sloppy on defense. And this team that had won 15 straight regular season games has now lost two in a row. Oh, the sky is falling. Like Darnold thing is going to come in and be fine. But I think this is more of a play on the 49ers defense, which uh, you read Fred Warner's comments after the game. I, I think they know they played sloppy. Uh, he made the, I think the, the, the quote, the example he used was like, we need to win these grimy type of games. Yes, yeah, we do. And this is not a good Cincinnati offensive line. Uh, they, they've allowed a lot of pressure this year. I don't think defensively they're as good in the secondary as they've been in. In the past, this is a Bengals team that was very fortunate to beat Seattle a couple weeks ago. Um, they were potentially a fourth down conversion away from the from the, uh, the Cardinals a couple weeks before yep. that from Arizona retaking the lead and maybe winning that game. But we, we, we hit on in the group chat, if you like the Bengals, the time is now to buy on their futures. Absolutely. If, 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 obviously, they if they do pull an upset in San Francisco, the, the prices that you're going to get are gone. I'm not there yet with the with with the Bengals. I like it. I, I, I love the Niners this week. I'm with you here again. This is a contrarian pick. Everyone's going to be at the Burroughs getting better, feeling healthy. Niners, uh, they lost and no Brock Purdy. So I'm with you there. My best bet is taking the Dolphins here minus eight and a half points. The numbers the come down obviously with the Hill news. Um, Tyreek Hill may or may not play. Waddle may or may not play. But this is a wager on the Dolphins of who they are and who the Patriots are. Well, the Dolphins playing a physical team. No. <laughs> they're playing a bad football team. Yes. yes. The Dolphins are blowing out all the bad football teams they play. The games aren't even close. They're running them out of the building. The Patriots, yes, they won against the Bills. That's take it for what it is. It doesn't carry over to this week. They still have the same issues they have. Can't run the football. Mac Jones, whatever that is. And defensively, they're without Judon. We know that. They're without Gonzalez. They're not as good on defense anymore. It's a get-right game for the Dolphins. This is outside for the Patriots in Miami. They struggle there anyways. 
I know, again, uh, Tyreek Hill might not play. Most might not play. Uh, but I think the Dolphins just run them out of the building as they've done every team they played at home this year who is not a physical football team. You, you, don't, you don't think that, that Mac Jones returning to the side of the 2020 uh, college football playoff championship game stadium where they where they beat Ohio State. That's not going to oh, bring I, well, out no, the good well, I'm changing it, guys, right now. Oh, by the way, we got the big story two weeks in a row now. Two of faces a former Alabama quarterback. Uh, they, uh, they 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 put that up. He was going to say, did you know? Did you know that uh, Tua backed up Jalen and came in for him? I did not know did that. You no. know that? Okay. No, no. Um, yeah, Miami's going to blow them out. I, I tend to agree with you. Yeah. All right. Before we get out of here, guys, I want to give you a reminder. It's not too late to play the free Fox Super Six game for Week Eight. Just download the Fox Sports app right now and make your picks for a chance to win your share of ten thousand dollars in weekly cash prizes. I got a. I, I took a little preview of the uh, the categories this week. There. Yeah. You like them, Barry? Good good? luck. Oh, good good luck. Good luck. Read my column. FoxSports.com. Yes. Yeah. All Bear stuff. My stuff, FoxSports.com. Your stuff, FoxSports.com. A little cross promotion. How was your, uh, I haven't read your your roundtable stuff yet. Is the roundtable up? It is up. It was up on Monday, I believe. Yeah. It's it's fun. It just, well, Monday, we just look at at the lines for the NFL and kind of guess where they might go throughout the week. Yeah. Yeah, that's. I like I like stuff like that because it gives you it's all it's not what I, it's not what I do best. It's like Sammy nailed it. He said yeah. Jacksonville. I, that's why I, I, I referenced the group chat. He said Jacksonville bet it. I think it was one or one and a half. Bet it now. It's going up to three. Boom. Sammy nailed it. So yeah. a lot of times it's often like your first instinct is yeah. the best instinct. Yeah. So I like yeah. stuff like that. There we go. Wow, we had a lot of instincts this week. That was yeah. uh, we we hit on a lot. Some ugly sides. I like U- it. Ugly, ugly sides. Good place to be. Ugly sides. Good music. Pop culture. Yeah, there we go. Good, good ribbing. Hopefully, we get some more winners. So, thanks again, everybody, for listening, downloading, rating, reviewing, subscribing. I hear our numbers are good, which I'm very happy about. Hopefully, we can have another uh, good week of picking sides here uh, in the National Football League. I think every time you say National Football League, you have to say the National Football with the pause, right? I love it. Yeah, it's yeah. contractual. Yes, absolutely. For Sammy P and Will, for Jeff. I'm Bear. Bless you bet. More you lose when you win.